Welcome to Electron Online, and here is another interesting, interesting topic for nuclear physics. In this case, we're going to talk about nuclear fission. Now, nuclear fission means that an atom or nucleus of a heavy atom will be somehow affected by the external forces, like a neutron bombarding on, upon it, and it will then fission or break into two pieces. Each individual piece, barium krypton is, in this case, will be released. And in addition, sometimes additional neutrons will be released as well. Now, in the example that I'm using here, I'm using uranium-235, which is a, a radioactive isotope that we use in nuclear power plants and in atomic weapons. And the way it works is that each time a reaction like this occurs, and we have a fission reaction, uranium-235 breaking into smaller isotopes and releasing additional neutrons, if each of those neutrons done in themselves hit another uranium-235, they will then split up into its daughter products, each releasing three more neutrons. Now you have nine neutrons. If they then go on and hit nine uranium-235 atoms, you can see then it'll very quickly mushroom, uh, literally speaking. And so in a nuclear power plant, this reaction is controlled by eliminating certain numbers of these neutrons using control mechanisms so that the reaction doesn't get out of hand. And of course, a nuclear weapon, you don't want that to happen. You want the whole weapon to go off. You want all the uranium to, to fission very quickly and then have enormous amount of energy released. So what we're going to do here is look at the actual reaction and try to figure out how much energy is released in a single one of these reactions. Again, where does energy come from? The assumption is that the daughter products, if you add the masses of the barium, the krypton, and the neutrons that are released and compare that to the initial uh, uh, mass of the uranium-235 and the neutron that's imparted upon it, then obviously there will be a difference in the mass, and that difference in the mass will then be converted to energy using the equation E equals mc squared. So what we have to do first is figure out how much mass was lost. What was the mass defect in this particular reaction? And of course, what we're going to do then is we're going to add one neutron to uranium atom, and then we're going to add these two together plus three neutrons. Now, to make it maybe a little bit simpler, how about if we subtract one neutron from the left side and subtract one neutron from the right side so we don't have to worry about adding anything to the left side. We just simply take the mass of the uranium nucleus and say that is the mass of the left side of the equation. Now all we have to do is add these two together plus two of these and we have the mass of the resulting reaction. All right, let's do that. So we have a 143.922953. Add it to 88.917630. We need two of these, so that would be 0, 1, uh, that would be 3, 1, that would be 3, 1, that would be 7, 1, 0, 2. So that's two neutrons, uh, one krypton, and one barium uh, isotope. Now, these are not the typical ones that you find in nature because they're very unstable and they very quickly on their own decay to smaller uh, nuclei as well, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So let's add these up. So we have a 3, that would be 1, 1, 9, 1, that would be 7, 1, that's 5, that's 8, 1, that's 12, that's 4, 1, that's 5, that's 3, 1, that's 2, 34. So if we now subtract this number, which is the mass of the daughter products on the right side of the, of the reaction, from the original, and I guess I'll have the original written down, so let's write it down in here. So we have 235. 0.043930. Of course, to be correct, I should put U behind all those. Those are atomic mass units. And subtract from that the resulting mass, 234.857913 atomic mass units. So subtract those. That's 7. That's 1. That's 0, 1. Uh, that's uh, 6. That's 3 minus that's, that's, uh, 13, that's 8. That's uh, 7 minus uh, 17, uh, 9, that would be 1. There we go. I almost got lost in my subtraction here. Okay, so that is the difference in the mass. That's the delta mass, also known as the mass defect. And then to find out how much energy is released, we take that mass defect and convert it to its equivalent mass. We can do it using the equation E equals mc squared. Or more easily, what we can do is we can go ahead and say that the energy released is equal to the delta M, the mass defect, times the conversion from, um, from atomic mass units to MEVs. And of course, I've got to have it right here. So convert it to 
MEV divided by mass units. So if we have the mass and mass units, and we multiply times the conversion from energy to, to atomic mass units, then we can find the equivalent energy release. So let's do that. So this is equal to 0 0.186017 atomic mass units, and multiply that times 931.5 MEVs per atomic mass unit, and that tells us how much mass is released in each of such reactions. So 0, 0.0, oh, no, 0 0.186017, 0 0.186017 times 931.5 equals, and that's 173.3 MeVs. There you go. Of course, that's a very simplistic way of looking at this reaction. Just as I said, these daughter products almost immediately begin to decay themselves into smaller through a beta decay, so there's additional energy release. And then, of course, we have to take into account the kinetic energy from all these moving particles and so forth. So the actual amount is probably a little bit closer to 200 MeVs when we take all the other things into account. But at least for simplicity's sake, uh, this is how we look at nuclear fission. If you only look at the breakup of a single nucleus into its daughter products like that, that would be the pure energy release in that particular instance. And that's how you look at nuclear fission. In the next video, let's go take a look at nuclear fusion, which is something a little bit different.